Hi, everyone. Let's take a look at number eight on page 246. A colony of bacteria in a culture grows at a rate given by n of t equal to 2 to the power of t divided by 5, where n is the number of bacteria t minutes from the beginning. The colony is allowed to grow for 60 minutes, at which time a drug is introduced to kill the bacteria. The number of bacteria killed is given by k of t equal to e to the power of t divided by 3, where k bacteria are killed at time t minutes. Part A, determine the maximum number of bacteria present and the time at which this occurs. Step number one, draw a number line or a timeline. So if you draw a straight line, the first thing you should think about is the time in terms of the beginning and time in terms of when the drug was introduced. So here, I'm going to write down zero minutes. Let's put it there. Here, let's write down 60 minutes. And again, 60 minutes refers to time equal to zero. And this is the introduction of the drug. So this is where the drug was introduced. Let's try again. Introduced. Step two, and let's go back to the wording in terms of 60 minutes and write that down in math. So if I go back and I highlight this part where it says the colony is allowed to grow for 60 minutes, that basically gives you the initial population. So again, if the colony is allowed to grow for 60 minutes, what that's saying is that you can find n of 60. So n of 60 just means at 60 minutes, what is the population? And of course, since we know n of t is going to be 2 to the power of t divided by 5, this means n of 60 is going to be 2 to the power of 60 divided by 5, which is exactly 2 to the power of 12. Now, here's the next part, step 2. When you think about the formula, when you think about the setup, what you're looking for is the population p and if you think about this you need to know the initial population which we can denote as p naught which is equal to 2 to the power of 12. so again it took 60 minutes to reach to this initial population times the growth rate which we know it's going to be n of t minus k of t let's understand this if you can understand the setup the rest of this extremely doable you got this now, let's go back to the beginning. If you look at the growth rate, that's n of t, which equals to 2 to the power of t minus 5. k of t is going to be e to the power of t minus 3. And you have to understand this happens in the same time frame. And the only separator is the initial population. So in the first 16 minutes, we just say, OK, let the population grow up to 2 to the power of 12 bacteria. And that's why I drew a timeline. Then the moment I have the drug introduced, I set this as time equal to zero. So what that means is if you go back again, think about this from the idea of playing a video, right? So in your mind, think about pressing play from zero to 60 minutes. The population grows to two to the power of 12. So let's write this down. P of t equals to 2 to the power of 12. And there's a growth rate, which is 2 to the power of t divided by 5. And as this is happening, again, the drug was introduced. So you're subtracting, which means you're destroying this population by e to the power of t divided by 3. So one more time, the population, which depends on time, and again, we're saying time equals 0 here after 60 minutes. At that point, we have the initial population, 2 to the power of 12, times the growth rate, 2 to the power of t minus 5, minus e to the power of t divided by 3. Now, in general, if you want to find the maximum or the minimum, also known as critical points, there are three major steps. 
So here it says find the maximum number of bacteria. So the keyword here is maximum. To find the maximum, you always go through the same steps, which are basically take the derivative, set it to zero, and in this case, you solve for t. I want to show you how to solve this manually. Now, again, if I take the derivative p prime of t, this equals to 2 to the power of 12. When I take the derivative of 2 to the power of t divided by 5, that's going to be t, not t, that's going to be 2 to the power of t divided by 5 times ln of 2 times the derivative of t to the power or t divided by 5, which is basically 1 divided by 5. Now, again, put some brackets just like that, minus when you take the derivative of e to the power of t divided by 3, it's going to be e to the power of t divided by 3 times the derivative of t divided by 3, which is basically one third. So once you find the derivative, you're going to set this to be 0. Now again, your goal is to solve for t. I want to show that in a moment. So we're going to copy 2 to the power of 12 times ln of 2 divided by 5. I'm going to put this in a set of brackets. That's going to be a number times 2 to the power of t divided by 5 minus, again, I'm going to put e to the power of t divided by 3, and I can either divide it by 3, I could multiply this by one third, it doesn't really matter. Now, at this point, you got to be very careful. There are many ways of doing this, and I'm just going to show you one method. So, if you want to solve this manually, what you want to do is isolate for t. And the best way to do that is first, bring this term to the left hand side. So negative e to the power of t divided by 3 divided by 3 becomes positive e to the power of t divided by 3 divided by 3. On the right hand side, I'm going to copy as is. I'm also going to express this as a fraction, so I'm going to put the 5 at the bottom, 2 to the power of 12 times ln of 2 times 2 to the power of t divided by 5. Now again, think about this idea. I need to isolate for t. It doesn't matter which side you want to isolate, so I'm just going to bring this 5 to the left hand side. So what I'm doing is I'm multiplying both sides by 5. So 5 goes here. Now, if I think about the denominator, I'm also going to bring 2 to the power of 12 times log 2 to the bottom. So I'm going to write down 3 times 2 to the power of 12 times log of 2. You can always put brackets to separate that. Now, don't forget, on the right-hand side, I have 2 to the power of t divided by 5 divided by e to the power of t divided by 3. So I hope you're connected so far. I hope you're taking a piece of paper and a pencil. You're writing it with me in real time. Now, to find t, here's what you have to do. Express the right-hand side in exponent form. So you know there's a t at the top and the bottom, so you can express it with a fraction with 2 to the power of 1 over 5 divided by e to the power of 1 over 3 in brackets to the power of t. Again, this makes sense because if you expanded this, you get exactly what's above back. On the left-hand side, I'm just going to copy as is. Now, be mindful. If you want to solve for the exponent, here's what you do. You take the operator ln. So I'm going to ln the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Now remember, a couple of concepts here I want to give you, just to give you a refresher quickly in case you forgot. There are many properties for logarithmic functions, also for ln. The one that we're going to apply here is ln of a to the power of x equals to x times ln of a. So this exponent could be brought to the front. Of course, you can also bring it back if you like. But the point I'm trying to make here is you're going to bring this exponent, t, to the front. So now what happens is, let me go back to the same color. I copy the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, it's going to be t times ln of 2 to the power of 1 over 5 divided by e to the power of 1 divided by 3. Now, your goal is to find time. And the opposite of multiplying by ln of 2 to the power of 1 over 5 divided by e to the power of 1 over 3 is by dividing. So what I do to the left, I do to the right, and the hard part is almost over. 
all you have to do is take your calculator, and I'm going to take mine so you can cross that out. Take the calculator, work it out. You can press pause, and when you press play again, I'll be here. Welcome back, everybody. Now, on my calculator, when I work it out, I get approximately 38.214 0662 minutes. And again, you can always round to one decimal place, two decimal places. You might want to follow your teacher. But again, notice this answer refers to the introduction of the drug. So again, this is after drug was introduced. Oops, let's try again. Introduced. And again, I can round this to let's say one decimal place. So approximately 38.2 minutes. Now, if I go back to the question, it's asking for two things. In part A, they're asking what is the maximum number of bacteria and the time at which this occurs. So, so far we found a time, but we haven't solved for the maximum, uh, maximum number of bacteria. I'm going to go back and do it now. So all you have to do is plug it back in. So again, I'm going to take that number and plug it back to here. Now, it depends on the accuracy you're looking for. So if I just took the final answer to one decimal place and I plug it back in, that's going to be P of 38.2. And again, you can decide if you want to use the entire decimal one decimal place or whatever in between that's up to you but if i plug it back in that's going to be two to the power of 12 times two to the power of 38.2 divided by five minus e to the power of 38.2 divided by three again let me take my calculator and work it out Again, when I work it out in the display, I see the following number. Now notice I'm going to round to one decimal place. So I do see 0 0.3241, by the way, for the record, but I'm going to round to one decimal place. And this is where, again, you want to listen to your, uh, your teacher, right? So if you think about the final answer, when it comes to population, when it comes to living things, I would say the general rule is you always round down because you can't really have, have a 0.3 of a human being or 0.3 of a bacteria or 0.3 of some living thing. That's kind of the general concept. But again, you might want to follow your teacher's notes to maximize your performance. So again, that is the answer for part A. Let's keep going. Part B, determine the time at which the bacteria colony is obliterated again if you translate this into math it basically means when is the population equal to zero so let's zoom in for you again this means zero equals to the population which is 2 to the power of 12 times 2 to the power of t divided by 5 minus e to the power of t divided by 3 now, at this point in the video, if you watch the whole thing, I would like you to press pause, go through the same technique. You can use part A as a template. Solve for T. When you're done and you press play again, I'll be here. Welcome back, everybody. Again, there are two ways of doing this. I'm just going to show you one method. Hopefully, this will resonate with you. I'm going to bring negative E to the power of T divided by 3 to the left. That becomes positive. I'm going to copy the right as is. Now the goal is to isolate for t. So I'm going to bring everything to the left. So I'm going to have e to the power of t divided by 3 divided by 2 to the power of t divided by 5, which equals to 2 to the power of 12. So all I did so far was I divided both sides by 2 to the power of t divided by 5. And again, by now, I hope you understand, to solve for the exponent, you have to long both sides. And of course, before we do that, let me add another step. So no one's left behind. I'm going to express this to the power of t. So I'm going to copy the right. On the left-hand side, that's going to be e to the power of 1 over 3 divided by 2 to the power of 1 divided by 5. And now you lawn each side just like that. Again, what happens is you can bring the exponent to the front. We've talked about that already. So t times ln of e to the power of 
1 divided by 3 divided by 2 to the power of 1 divided by 5 equals to ln of 2 to the power of 12. The opposite of multiplying is to divide. I'm, divide. I'm dividing both sides by ln of e to the power of 1 over 3 divided by 2 to the power of 1 over 5, just like that. Again, take your calculator, work it out place. Now, I'm going to do the same thing. Again, in the display, I see 42.72008052 minutes. Be mindful. This refers to after the drug was introduced. And of course, again, depending on how many decimals they're looking for, let's say I'm rounding it to uh, one decimal place, we're looking at time approximately to be 42.7 minutes. I hope this makes sense.